Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Clicking Keys. In this video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna write a script from start to finish to help you rename hundreds of files in one drag and drop motion. I'd love your feedback. Please write some comments below and let me know what you think of this video compared to my other style of videos. That'll help give me direction for future videos, letting me know what you guys prefer to watch. With that said, let's get into it. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know I always start my scripts with the on run handler. In this case, I'm gonna start it with the, an on open handler because I know I wanna make this a drag and drop script. After the open, I'm gonna follow it with two parentheses and a dropped files. That's a variable that will collect all of the files that are dropped onto the script in order to start the script, and then we will process the files from that variable. So my first statement is going to be a display dialog to show the user a message with a default answer of nothing, which will allow them to enter some input. So the whole line will be set new name to text returned, the text that they enter of the display dialog. Please enter your new file name with the default answer of nothing. I could put in a value in the default answer, which would then set the input field to some, whatever value I've entered there. In this case, I don't want to put any value in, so I'm just going to leave it an empty string. Next, I'm going to create a counter. So I'm going to say set I to one. And this will be because we know that the users are going to drop one or many files, and this will allow us to change the name of those files to the name that they give us plus an incrementing number. Next, we wanna start looping through the files that the user dropped. So we're gonna create a repeat loop, uh, and we're going to repeat with a single file. In my case, I'm gonna use the variable a file in the dropped files that we captured on open. So this will process one file at a time depending upon how many files that the user has dropped. So if they drop one file, we'll process one file. If they drop 25 files, we'll process each of the 25 files one at a time. And because we know we wanted to create a counter just before I start my repeat again, I'm going to say set i to i plus one. This will change the value of the variable i to whatever it previously was plus one number. So it'll just count up one, two, three, four, five for however many files the user has dropped. Next, I'll work with Apple Script's text item delimiters, but before I do anything to them, I wanna save what their current value is. So I'm gonna say set saved delims to Apple Script's text item delimiters. This will store the value of the current text item delimiter in the variable saved delims. That way I can reapply it, so I'll do that now, and I will say set Apple Script's text item delimiters to the saved delims. That way I can grab the value of it, change it to whatever I need to do with it, and then I can change it back to whatever they were previously uh, after I'm done. So I'll just make a little comment here to, for your reference, save the current text item delimiters, and then uh, reapply the current text item delimiters. That way you'll understand kind of in the script if you comment it the same way what I'm doing in this, in this portion. So now that I've got it saved, uh, I can go ahead and do whatever I want with those text item delimiters. So the next thing I'm gonna do is set a file to a file as string. This is coercing the variable a file to a string. And that's because the variable dropped files is a list of aliases. So when I repeat with that, my variable a file is actually an alias. But I wanna work with it as a string so that I can manipulate it and change it to my new name and increment it with that number. So now a file is a string and it's a path to my file. And the, by default, Apple uses HFS paths. This means every folder and the file name are separated by a colon. So if I want to get the different pieces of my path, I can say set path parts to text items of a file. But I first need to reset my Apple script text item delimiters to that colon, the piece of which is in between all of the folders and file name. So if I say set Apple scripts text item delimiters to a colon and then say set path parts to text items of a file, path parts is now going to be a list of all of the different folders and lastly the file name of that path that I'm working with. So I've got all my path parts and I know that the last element of the path parts is the file name. Because I'm going to rename my file, I don't want that part. So I'm gonna say set new path to items one through negative two of path parts. That means it will give me the first folder, the second folder, third folder, all the way down to the last folder, but not including the file name. 
negative one would have been the file name. So by using negative two, I'm coming in one more element from the end and giving me just the folders. Next, I'm gonna update my new path variable and I'm going to add the new name that the user supplied. So I'm gonna say set new path to new path ampersand. I'm gonna add a colon because that's the delimiter between the last item and my file name. So I'm gonna say colon and new name, the name that the user supplied, ampersand underscore ampersand i ampersand dot jpeg as a string. So this will now turn my new path variable into the existing folder that the user dropped the file from. And I'm going to add their new name with an underscore and then my incrementing number and the JPEG extension. At this point, we have a variable called a file, which is the full file path to the existing file that we're working with. And we've got a new path variable that contains the folder structure of the existing file, but also a new name applied to it. So now we can take those two variables and use them to rename the file. I could rename the files by doing a tell application finder statement, but I don't like to script the finder if I can avoid it because it's not as stable or as fast. Instead, I'll rely on a shell command. So we'll say do shell script, quote mv space quote ampersand quoted form of POSIX path of a file ampersand space ampersand quoted form of POSIX path of new path. Let me explain this in a bit more detail so it makes some sense. So the do shell script portion tells it to make a call to a shell command. In this case, we're using the MV command, which is actually a move command. Since we're specifying the same source and destination directory, the move command is really just going to do a rename for us. In the next portion of the statement, I say quoted form of POSIX path of a file. Let me break that down into the two pieces. POSIX path is because I want to convert the HFS path that we talked about earlier. The Macintosh uses colons between each of the directories, but the terminal command shell command will use a forward slash in between the different portions of a path. So by saying POSIX path of a file, it will turn my HFS path with the colons into the POSIX form of that path using the forward slashes. So that's the first part. Then the next portion, when I say quoted form of, that makes sure to put that entire path in quotes. That lets the move command understand that that is one segment of information. That way, if there were spaces involved in that path, it's not gonna get confused and think that we're sending in a different argument to the command, but instead that this is all one piece of information that is in fact a path to a file. Then the next portion of the statement, I do an ampersand with a quote and a space and a quote and another ampersand to give a space between the two paths, the old path and the new path. That's part of something that the move command requires. And then lastly, I just add the new path with the same quoted form of POSIX path of that we've already discussed. So that completes the entire move command, which is ultimately going to do the renaming of our file. Now that we have all that written, we can save our script as an application and we can give it a name and choose where we wanna save it. In this case, I'll just save it to the desktop. And we can see our script is a droplet indicated by the fact that it has a little down arrow on the script icon, which means it can accept files when you drop them on it. So let's go ahead and give our script a test and see what happens. Now you've got a script that can rename hundreds of files with just a drag and drop. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've liked this video. Please let me know in the comments below what you thought of the new format. If you've liked it, I'd love to hear it. If you think it needs some work or you prefer the other method, let me know that as well. I always look forward to your feedback.